What's up boys? Today I'm on NBA 2K23 and I made a video I've been meaning to make for a long time. I'm going to pull the trigger on some of the trade rumors I've seen and make a few of my own trades that I would like to see happen in real life. I'm going to simulate this updated league 10 years into the future and also to spice things up, I'm going to expand the league and relocate teams in a very biased way that is going to piss a lot of NBA fans off. In this simulation, I'm going to use the next two draft classes from real life that have been made in this game. This is super important for what I'm about to do because these classes are supposed to be stacked, including the most interesting prospect in a very long time, 7'4", Victor Wembenyamba from France. Essentially, I'm going to force Dogwater teams to give up on their unrealistic hopes and dreams by making them tank immediately, while only making trades that I think make sense and would be allowed to happen in the first place. First up, the Wizards. I don't know what it is about the Wizards organization, but I don't like them. They haven't won a championship since 1979, and the last time they had my interest was when they almost had a shootout in the locker room. They're wasting Bradley Beal's prime by giving him every penny they have, and they really think they have a shot of making a finals run with him, Tingus Pingus, and a runway model. They're delusional, so I'm going to tear this team apart for the better. Bradley Beal is first to go. There's been mock trades about him going to Boston for a while now, and I wish it would happen already. Beal and Tatum grew up five minutes away from each other. They both went to Chaminade High School in St. Louis, and with the East turning into the dominant conference in recent years, I think they need another All-NBA player to make more finals runs. So here's the trade I came up with that works out in the game. The Celtics get Bradley Beal, Daniel Gafford, and Will Barton. The Wizards get 24 year old Robert Williams who is very underpaid defensive player of the year Marcus Smart Derek White a top three protected 25 first round pick and cash right now the Wizards are an unusual team with two star centers I'm sure these weirdos would be okay with this but I'm not the Wizards are going to trade Tingus Pingus and Corey Kispert to the Raptors for OG and Unobi, Chris Boucher an unprotected 23 first rounder and a lottery protected 25 first round pick the Wizards now look like a great rebuilding team that could definitely pull some players in free agency and they just added three first round picks to build on the Raptors are looking more like contenders. They're no longer starting a 6-8 center, and they still keep the same system where their big man is a decent three-point threat. In hindsight, I wish I would have made Kristaps sign and trade, but I want to leave that in the hands of the teams in the game so they can keep their core players if they want. The next big trade is going to be centered around the Michael Strahan of the NBA. It's no secret I'm a big-time bronze sexual. If I found out he was sexually frustrated, I would be walking with a limp until he won six rings. That being said, LeBron is turning 38 this year. He weighs over 250 pounds, and they have him playing almost every Every minute of every game. The Lakers have an aging goat, but they don't have a roster that's contending because they're holding on to their 25 and 27 picks. Fuck that. Let them go. How is that going to affect LeBron's legacy? I'm trading Russell Westbrook, Lonnie Walker the fourth, a top five protected 25 first rounder and an unprotected 27 first rounder to the Pacers. In return, they're getting Miles Turner and Buddy Hield. Both players are good to great shooters. This makes the Lakers more likely to contend over the next couple of years, yet neither of them have ridiculous contracts, so next year they can still look to make a big signing, and most importantly, Miles Turner can take the center duties away from AD, which should help him stay uninjured. The Pacers are now in full rebuild mode like they should be. My favorite thing about this is Benedict Mathurin, their sixth overall pick from last year's draft, is now starting. Russ has one year left on his contract to redeem himself like CP3 did on the Thunder, or at the worst, he'd mentor the Pacers to up-and-coming guards into superstar roles. The next trade is the only three-team trade I came up with, and possibly the most important one for the next decade. It's starting with Ben Simmons. I'm not trying to dog on the guy. I think I think Ben is a super underrated player right now. I think he's going to surprise a lot of NBA fans this year and end up in the Hall of Fame when it's all said and done. But I think there's too much off-court drama for this team to work, and I think if they don't make it past the second round this season, they should just abandon ship and trade everyone to the highest bidder. So without tearing this team apart, the Nets are going to trade Ben Simmons, Nicholas Claxton, and a 23 second rounder. In return, they'll get Clint Capella, a very unproblematic big man that will take on all the responsibilities in the paint. They're also getting an unprotected 23 first rounder from the Hawks, and they're getting Spencer Dinwiddie witty from the Mavs. Spencer is the best part of this trade. After this season, he's on a team option for 20 million, which puts him in a decent position if Kyrie leaves Brooklyn after his contract is up next year. Meanwhile, the Mavs get Bodan Bodanovic, who is going to have a much smaller role in the Hawks since the arrival of DeJounte Murray, but now he's starting again on a contending team where he's a better fit and the Mavericks love having Europeans on their roster. This next trade I don't think is that big of a deal other than the fact that the Jazz should be tanking and the Nuggets are getting rid of a risky contract while also adding to their depth. The Nuggets receive Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, and Rudy Gay. The Jazz receive Michael Porter Jr., Bruce Brown, Zeke Nanaji, and a 23 second rounder. This last trade might be my favorite. Damian Lillard is a great player, but he seems like a bit of a dumbass who doesn't want to win a championship. So I'm pretty much swapping him for Paul George and sending him to the Clippers. I don't know why, but I think Dame and Kawhi would get along great. They're both low energy dudes who are very good at basketball and care about playing close to their family. I know Dame is from Oakland, and I don't know how to explain this, but the Clippers seem like a better representation of Oakland than Golden State. 
Paul George isn't going to win a championship in Portland, but he only has two years left on his contract. And with Dame gone, it also clears up a ton of minutes for their best young guards. First things first, I need to edit a certain player to keep the future of this league accurate. I'm going to injure Miles Bridges for the max amount of days possible. He is now on a suspension and self-isolating. I'm going to also turn down all his IQ stats, and if I'm keeping it real... Here are the expansion team designs I came up with. First, we have the Virginia Beach Conquistadors, whose main sponsor is the U.S. Army. The mascot should do well in the Latino community, and Virginia Beach seems like a good expansion spot. It's a great location to live, which would attract free agents. There's a metro population of 1.8 million, they have a ton of visitors, and there's a lot of wealth in the area. The rivals would be the D.C. Wizards, Charlotte Hornets, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I tried to include some different colorways from what's already in the league, so these ended up being the most challenging uniforms to create. The arena looks pretty good. I tried making it look beachy and retro at the same time, but ooh, do I love this next one. Here are the Chicago Matadors. I think Chicago is an overlooked destination for an expansion team. It's the third largest city in the U.S. behind New York and Los Angeles, which both already have two NBA teams. With a 9.5 million metro population, they could easily have another franchise, but the most important thing about this is that you put this team in the suburbs of Chicago. Chicago is a great city, but it's dangerous and hard to get around. Even the Chicago Bears are about to drop a cool billion dollars just to move their state away from the downtown area. Their colors are dark blue and gold, which is accurate to what matadors traditionally like to wear. The whole branding behind it is just to fuck with the Chicago Bulls. I think the idea would take off and pull away fans with money, and the pinstripe jerseys are so clean. It's either a tribute to the Jordan era or another fuck you. The Bulls have the United Center, the matadors have Boeing Center. Again, Fuck the Bulls. I bet some of you are upset that I didn't expand to Seattle, but I got you. I think Seattle deserves better than an expansion team. They deserve a relocated team, and I chose the Detroit Pistons for them. The fans get an up-and-coming team that they'll immediately be all on board for, and Seattle is a more desirable location for a free agency than Detroit. I'm sure Detroit has its nice areas, but the rest of the world sees it as ghetto. And to prove that, let's look at their best free agent signings in their 81-year history. They got Shauncee Billups before his prime. To be fair, it's the uh, best signing of any NBA team I relocated but still not a superstar. Followed by Antonio McDyess and Terry Mills. Yeah, welcome to Seattle. I relocated three more NBA franchises and some of you are going to despise me for the next one, but let's just get it over with. The Toronto Raptors will now be the Tampa Bay Alligators. That's right, the Nelk boys fell off after Kawhi left. Toronto is one of the largest cities in the league, but what's the point of it if half the time you don't let the players and fans come to the games because of COVID? On top of that, you have to worry about passports and work visas for players and families. I think it's just better to keep the NBA in America. If they have a problem with it, just give Ontario to the US. The alligator mascot is a reference to the Florida Gators. Just imagine if they had a real alligator as their mascot crawling around the arena taking pictures with fans. Seems like a Florida thing to do. And they're kind of like dinosaurs like Raptors are, so you know. Speaking of, I tried to make their alternate jerseys look like the throwback Raptors jerseys. Their main sponsor is Gatorade. The court is unique and swampy. An important thing about this move is that the future of their team, Scotty Barnes, is from Florida. So moving to Florida might keep them around and avoid another Kawhi episode. I'm sure Toronto is fun, eh? But the best free agents to ever sign there? Jose Calderon, Anthony Parker, and Bismack Biombo. Look, I'm sorry, Toronto. I had to do it. If you want to watch an NBA game, just visit Cleveland. Other than that, enjoy your free health care and maple syrup. The next relocation is I'm moving the Minnesota Timberwolves to Las Vegas and renaming them to the Aces. I know the WNBA team there is already called the Las Vegas Aces, but maybe through pure confusion, the NBA team will drive up ticket sales for the WNBA team. It's a win-win. But why Minnesota? Minnesota. First of all, they have the furthest distance traveled almost every NBA season, which is a big disadvantage. And again, what young millionaire athlete wants to live in a cold, boring city? Their best free agent signings of all time, Joe Smith, Troy Hudson, and Trenton Hassell. In Las Vegas, they'll have a much better shot at keeping Anthony Edwards on the team, assuming that he could stay out of the courtroom while in Sin City. Last but not least, this is a personal vendetta for me because I live in Missouri. Kansas City deserves to have the Sacramento Kings again. We had them from 1972 to 1985, and ever since then, they've been the poverty franchise of California. Let's be honest, even if you live in Sacramento, why not be a Golden State fan? They haven't made the playoffs since 2006, and their last big free agency signing was 30-year-old Vlade Divac. Kansas City has a similar metro population as Sacramento, an NBA arena, and they would have one 
the most loyal franchises, just like the Kansas City Chiefs and Oklahoma City Thunder, because Midwesterns have nothing to do. I'm naming this franchise the Mocan Indians. The Indian mascot would not only be a tribute to the Kansas City Chiefs, but it would also gain the Republican region support, showing that they aren't afraid of cancel culture. Naming it Mocan would unify both state sports fans and be a reference to the dominant EYBL team in the area. And the Indians versus Conquistadors would be bound to be one of the greatest rivalries of all time. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't move them to St. Louis. That's because it's dangerous as fuck there. Kansas City isn't a poster city, but you're more than twice as likely to be murdered in St. Louis. Trust me, if you're driving through St. Louis, take a picture of the arch and don't stop until you're about half an hour out. On top of all that, Kansas City is closer to a lot more big cities that have a history of sports culture. Here's an updated map of the NBA. There still remains the issue of the Grizzlies and Pelicans sticking out into the Eastern Conference, but the league looks much cleaner without the outliers like the Timberwolves and the Raptors. There are three teams in the three largest states and two teams in the three largest cities. Travel time would be cut down across the board except for Seattle and Portland. All things considered, it's a much better NBA in my opinion. Here's how the teams looked after the trades and expansion draft. The Conquistadors look pretty bad, but that's good for next year's draft. They're led by Markel Fultz and Rui Hachimura. The Matadors have 80 overall Michael Porter Jr. I gotta respect the move by the Jazz. They're showing their commitment to tanking this season. Boston looks like one of the best teams in the league with Bradley Beal at the point, and I also signed DeMarcus Cousins on a league minimum, which makes him the starting center. The Clippers look so much cleaner. They've got playoff experience, and they still have a great six-man in John wall. The Hawks look terrific from 1 through 4 and Ben Simmons moved up to an 87 overall after making him a small forward. The Jazz might be worse than the expansion teams. Keep in mind they willingly gave up MPJ to the expansion draft. The Lakers should probably be starting Patrick Beverly, but I let that slide. They look like they can win it all this year and the next. The Mavs are still the Lucas show, but after losing Jalen Brunson, they look just as good as they were last year. The Nets are still one of the best teams when everybody can get along. From my experience of running 2K simulations, this team will either win 70 games or not make the playoffs. The Nuggets have a small ball but good backcourt duo and Conley and Murray definitely should make it out of the first round with this team. The Pacers are one of my favorites to get Victor in the draft. I just hope Russell doesn't actually help them win games. The Alligators look good on paper but this is still one of the weirdest teams ever put together. The Blazers may or may not make the playoffs but I really wish they wouldn't. The Wizards look mid-rebuild. They don't have a star yet but that's okay because they own other teams draft picks after trading Bill and Tingus Pingus away. All front office actions are computer automated but trades have to be approved by me. Other than that we're ready to start simulating. Just the second trade of the season and nobody wants to pay Michael Porter Jr. 180 million over the next five years, including the expansion teams. Luka was the MVP after averaging the third most points per game in NBA history while also averaging a triple double. Ivy was a rookie of the year. John Wall was the sixth man of the year while backing up Damian Lillard. Jokic was the defensive player of the year while almost averaging a triple double. The Lakers finished first in the West and the Grizzlies and Clippers also won 50 games this season. The Jazz were the worst team in the league with only 23 wins. The Hawks let the East with 60 wins, followed by five other teams that won 50 or more. The Bucks had the biggest upset in the first round after taking out the Cavs in five. The Celtics swept the Hawks and have a rematch from last year's playoffs against the Bucks, who have been running through the higher seeds in the East. The Lakers only needed eight games to reach the Western Conference Finals and are matched up against the LA Clippers. The only significant injury from these four teams is that John Wall is out for the season with a broken ankle after having a redemption season. The Celtics swept the Bucks, and it was looking like the Clippers would do the same after going up three to zero, but the Lakers forced a game seven just to lose by 16. During these playoffs, the Celtics' big three have been averaging over 70 points a night. The Celtics went up 3-1, to one, but the Clippers won two in a row for a winner-take-all game, which I had to watch for myself. The Celtics are looking for their first championship since 2008 and to break the tie with the Lakers as the most winning franchise in league history. The Clippers, on the other hand, are just looking to win their first ring ever. Hawaii came out dominating in the first half, but the Celtics were playing perfect and had control of the game nearly the entire time. The Celtics started the second half up eight, but it was game time, hit with a clean step back three. The Celtics were still hot, but Dame wasn't having it. Beal just tossed Dame down, which probably deserved a technical. Bill and Gallinari immediately go into strategy talk like, grab him by the balls next time. They're actually big and he doesn't like it. Which one's bigger, the left or the right? The left. You'll know it when you feel it. The Clippers get two dunks in a row and bring the game within one in the fourth quarter. Bill hits a Kobe type of shot, but Dame shakes him, draws a help, and dishes it to Powell. Tatum gets two nice finishes inside to bring the lead to five. And this is a story of this game, Dame finds a wide open Powell, he breaks it, 
still gets the ball, comes down court, and hits a three immediately. The Celtics go up eight points, but the Clippers answered back with three wild finishes in a row. Tatum tipped that pass, but he still finished it. Kawhi finishes with Cousin all over him, and now it's a two-point game. Tatum is doing everything he can to end this run, but DeMarcus Cousins had to do it for him. He grabs a board and puts it back in. Kawhi hits another big shot with 40 seconds left. Jalen Brown has a ball off an offensive rebound, but Powell plays great D, and the Clippers get the stop and the ball with 13.1 seconds left. They call a timeout, and bless your heart, 2K, this is with the skill level set to Hall of Fame in Game 7 of the NBA Finals. They try coming up with a play for Reggie Jackson, then they try to set a screen on the ball, and Kawhi just launches a three with a D all over him. The Celtics win ring number 18, the Chaminade boys only go in for a side hug. Ime Udoka is about to have a wild night with the female Celtics employees, but come on, he deserves it. Tatum was a Finals MVP after averaging 28, 6, and 5. The Clippers shot 2 for 18 from 3, which was a deal breaker in this one, just unfortunate. In the offseason, Udonis Haslam tried retiring at 43, but I'm going to have to overrule that. He has one more in him. The Jazz were working hard for the worst record all season long, and it paid off. They got the number one overall pick. The Magic jumped from the fifth to the second pick, and the Pacers got real lucky. They were supposed to be the 10th pick and went to the fourth. The Jazz took 7-4 Victor, which turns the whole franchise around. The Magic took Scoot Henderson at second, and the Pacers drafted Baba Miller from Florida State. The Sun CPU made a trade for Wendell Carter Jr. Celtics, what the fuck is that, and where can I get that player build tutorial? Good lord. The biggest move in free agency is that Kristaps Porzingis left the Gators for the Spurs. Again, I should have signed and traded him. The Gators could have been a solid team with him. Andrew Wiggins is a first all-star to sign to an expansion team. He's now with the Conquistadors. And Miles Bridges signed a two-year deal to the Utah Jazz, so now he can beat multiple wives in Mormon country. LeBron went down two, making him a 94 overall. Luka is now a 97. PG-13 went down three and is now an 85 overall with one year left on his contract. The Lakers brought back Hild and Turner, but they're starting Colin Gillespie at the point. The Suns look like serious contenders. They have a starting five of 83 through 91 overall after acquiring Wendell Carter Jr. Golden State didn't do much last year and Curry is about to exit his prime, so I decided to make a win now trade for them. The Warriors receive Paul George and Yusuf Nurkic, and the Trailblazers will receive James Wiseman, Clay Thompson, Patrick Baldwin Jr., a 26 second rounder, and an unprotected 27 first rounder. The Warriors fill some holes and keep their shooting abilities. They have a 82 through 94 starting five and manage to keep Kuminga and Moody. The Blazers get a veteran in Klay Thompson while also respectfully, the legend doesn't have to move across the country. They also get a few picks and two project players. Another team that didn't contend last year and needs help doing it in the future is the Miami Heat. Again, Raptors fans are going to hate me after this video, but I'm going to move Kyle Lowry upstate along with an unprotected first rounder for Cole Anthony. This should keep the Heat's core young and ready for the next generation, while the Magic make room for their second overall pick, Scoot Henderson, and have a great mentor in Kyle Lowry for their young talent. It didn't take long for the CPU to come up with some noteworthy trades. Questionable move by the Suns, but they traded Mikhail Bridges to the Matadors for the veterans Harrison Barnes and Al Horford. Two weeks later, there's an even bigger trade. The Bulls got robbed. They traded Zach Levine to the Pelicans for CJ McCollum and Jose Alvarado. The Bulls managed to get older and worse. Luka is a back-to-back -back MVP after another triple-double season. Scoot Henderson averaged 20 a night and won Rookie of the Year over Victor. The Magic got another award for Paolo Banchero winning Most Improved Player. He was also first team All-NBA as an 81 overall sophomore. Golden State finished first in the West with a 54 and 28 record. The Hawks for the second season in a row are the only team to win 60 or more games and the Chicago Matadors made the playoffs as a four seed in their second year of existence. They were led by Mikhail Bridges, Draymond Green, and Patrick Beverly. My poor Lakers went 40 and 42 and finished 13th in the West. Turns out you need a point guard. The Suns made all these trades just to be matched up with the Warriors in the first round. The Matadors really made the playoffs before the former Kings franchise did and they have a possible matchup with the Chicago Bulls in the second round. But neither Chicago team got past the first. The defending champion Celtics were taken out by the Heat in seven. Turns out that John Morant is out for the season with a dislocated right patella so the Mavs move on. They then swept the former Western champs Clippers and are facing Golden State in the conference finals and in the east are the one and two seed Hawks and Cavs. Luka averaged 43 points a game and took out the improved Warriors in six. Meanwhile the Cavs came out on top after going seven games with the Hawks and for the finals the Mavs beat the Cavs in five. Luka really just had the greatest playoff run of all time. I can make all the trades I want but shit is gonna happen when a white guy is averaging a 40 point triple double. His best two players were 84 overall Christian Wood and 80 overall Bodon. LeBron wanted to retire at 39 but with Bronny in the next draft class I had to overrule that. The Knicks must have rigged the draft lottery again because they went from the 10th 
pick to the number one overall. They went on to take six foot eleven Xavier Booker from Michigan State. The Magic again take another point guard at number two with DJ Wagner. And the highest pick yet by an expansion team, the Conquistadors took the 7-3 Spaniard Ademara. The Indians finally traded De'Aaron Fox to the Rockets for the seventh overall pick, even though they already have the eighth. Two years later, an MPJ is still being passed around like a blunt. He's gone to the Thunder for a first and second round pick. Mikey Williams went to the Spurs at 15, and the player I was waiting on, Bronny James of all teams, went to the Cleveland Cavaliers. The only big move in free agency was that Lonzo left the Bulls for the Rockets, and with Jalen Green and Jabari Smith two years into the future, they are now serious contenders. Luka partied so hard after winning a championship that he regressed in overall for the first time in his career at 25. Shaden Sharp went up five overall in one season after the Paul George trade, and LeBron is still looking good at a 92 overall in the season which he will turn 40. The Bulls suck all of a sudden. Their best player is now Nikola Vukovic. The Cavs look great going into the 24-25 season, but their oldest star, Donovan Mitchell, is starting to look a little unnecessary, if you know what I'm saying. You should have known this was going to happen since the draft. I'm trading LeBron James to Cleveland. Him and Donovan Mitchell are both on one-year contracts, but this has to make the Cavs the favorite to win the championship this season. So on top of Donovan Mitchell, the Lakers are also going to get an unprotected 26 first rounder as well as Ricky Rubio, but that's just for salary caps. No homo, this would be the cutest little storyline of NBA history. Worst case scenario for the Cavs, they don't win, LeBron retires, and they have a ton of cap space. Meanwhile, the Lakers stay relevant for a few more years and get a much needed draft pick. Three weeks before the trade deadline, we get the biggest CPU trade yet. The Spurs receive Carl Anthony Towns and an unprotected 28 first round pick for Kristaps Porzingis and Devin Vassell. MVP, who do you think? The Knicks have the rookie of the year after the rigged draft. Chet, defensive player of the year. Gross. Usman Garuba is most improved player with 3.6 points per game. LeBron was all NBA second team while Mitchell was third team. The Lakers didn't make the playoffs and the Cavs are the one seed in the East and the Rockets are the one seed in the West. The Mavs upset the two seed again so we might have another Luka offseason. The Hawks had their worst year yet placing as a seven seed but they made it to the second round. The Cavs go up 3-0 on the Celtics but it goes to a game seven. The only highlight we get from Bronny is an open dunk. The Celtics stars were playing great and hitting threes with the defense all over them. Of course LeBron can't get embarrassed like this in front of his son so he tries to one-up them. And James launches it from deep. Cleveland the rebound. Oh, rejected by Beal. That play just kept getting worse and worse. LeBron missed by a couple of feet, but to be fair, he's 40. He should be in on a golf course, not in the NBA playoffs. These teams started to trade the lead off dunks in the third, but LeBron takes these young bucks to school. He's just an old man from Akron. Allen doesn't help off, and the Celtics take a four-point lead in the fourth. LeBron is still dominating late, so they decide to double him off the screen, but he kicks it to Mobley for an open three. The Cavs get another stop. LeBron gets the ball and drives through Jalen's chest and puts their lead at three. Mobley gets an easy bucket on Beal with 22 seconds left. The Celtics take a decent three, but LeBron gets the miss. The Celtics shove him into the crowd. The Cavs survive and advance. The conference finals ended up not being very interesting. The Cavs and the Grizzlies swept the Hawks and the Thunder. In the finals, the Cavs went up three to one, but I really wanted to watch another game seven, so I forced two wins for the Grizzlies, but it turns out LeBron is out with right knee tendonitis. They had Okoro and Brooks starting, but I put Bronny into the starting lineup, and I'm not gonna lie, they had him made at 6-3, but I made him 6-5. The Grizzlies are pretty good. They won 49 games this season and Ja is now in 96 overall. Bronny had a lot more highlights in this one. He started the game off with a strong finish. He was locking up Desmond Bain, but most of this game was 1v1 of Garland versus Morant. Ja had 20 of the Grizzlies 27 in the first half and was almost single-handedly outscoring the Cavs. Bronny is just a kid from his father's balls. He ends up giving the Cavs their largest lead of the game at the end of the third. The Grizzlies kept it close in the fourth, but the star players from the Cavs had controlled this game the whole fourth quarter. The Grizzlies had a chance to get it within one possession, but they miss and Steven Adams is blocked twice by the Twin Towers. 9-11 never forget it. Garland was given finals MVP. Him and Mobley had a great game seven along with Bronny scoring 15 points and having the Cavs only two steals. LeBron wanted to retire last year but doesn't want to anymore. He wants six rings. Chris Paul wanted to retire but I overruled that. I'm not responsible for this but the Hawks get the number one pick from the Indians. This is the first year I didn't use player made draft classes because these players being drafted this year are 16 in 2022. So if someone could accurately make these draft classes, they should probably be on a watch list. The Hawks finally fill their center needs with 7-2 Julian Atkins. The Wizards take Arthur Gilbert and fourth overall to the Knicks, Dick Wright Foreman or Dick Wright for man. What the fuck, 2K? I know you actually come up with these players. So who's a funny guy over there having a gay escort drafted in the lottery? And of course it's going to the Knicks. Personality, laid back, badges, clamps, 
Menace Workhorse. This nigga gay. Everybody this offseason resigned to the respective teams besides John Collins. He left the Hawks for the Virginia Beach Conquistadors on a three year, $84 million deal. LeBron is now an 88 overall, but Bronny went up to a 79. Beal and Robert Williams are now even at 86 overall. Dame is now an 85, and Paul George went to 78, but still managed to resign for two years, $54 million to the Warriors. MPJ is traded again, this time to the Trailblazers, and the Thunder receive Fred Van Vliet and Jeremy Grant. About halfway through the season, the Rockets are 41 and 5, and the Jazz are 34 and 9, so I guess there's some new powerhouses in the league. They might as well rename the MVP award after Luka. This is the fourth year in a row he's won it, and the Hawks Center won Rookie of the Year. In 2026, Trey still owns the Knicks. The Hawks beat them in five. The Hawks swept the number one seed Pacers and will face a Magic who took out the defending champion Cavaliers in six. Houston and Utah are matched up in the West, and that's no surprise in this day and age. It ends up being the Hawks and the Jazz in the finals. The Hawks are stacked. They kept all their important pieces and added a number one overall pick big man. But the Jazz, they really only have Victor. And well, they have Miles Bridges assaulting the league, but I made him much worse after his suspension. The Hawks went up three to one on the Jazz and I forced a game seven because I handcrafted both these teams and wanted to see a good game. But this was a terrible game to watch. It turns out 85 overall Victor is the most dominant 2K player of all time. He was terrorizing the Hawks even though they have a 7-2 big man. This Frenchie is so big, his head sticks off the screen and the close-up shots. The most interesting thing that came out of this game is that I noticed the Hawks are coached by Shauncee Billups and the Jazz have a female coach, which makes her the first woman head coach to win a championship after Victor had 27 points and 6 blocks on 11 for 13 shooting. Yet Victor did not win the finals MVP. 77 overall, Jaden Bradley won it by averaging 12 points and 12 assists. This was just a weird offseason and I have to put an asterisk next to this one because the Hawks probably could have won one game out of the three and won the championship. LeBron, Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook are now retired after the 25-26 season. LeBron finished first in scoring with 44,000 points, fifth in three-pointers, 20th in rebounds, third in assists, and fourth in steals. The Pelicans have the first pick and the Thunder have the second and third in the draft. The Raptors finally trade Pascal Siakam to the Trailblazers for Nasir Little and a seventh for tenth pick swap. In free agency, both former Wizards big men are on the move. Tinkus Pinkus is going to the Bucks and Robert Williams III is going to the Matadors. Victor is up to an 88 overall at 22. Bronny is now an 82 at 20. And the Trailblazers look pretty good for the first time all decade. They have 87 Anthony Simons, 86 Pascal Siakam, and realistically, they would have kept Shaden Sharp and James Wiseman after the trades I made. MVP, yeah, yeah, who cares? But Bronny James won two awards his dad has never won. Six men of the year because he was coming off the bench behind Isaac Okoro and most improved player. The Cavs take out the Celtics again in the first round. The weird defending champs Jazz are taken out by the Seattle Sonics, formerly known as the Pistons, and the Hawks who deserved the championship last year are taken out by the Orlando Magic. The finals go to game seven and the Cavaliers win again. Garland averaged 30 and 12 and was finals MVP. They won over the Rockets who are unreal at this point. They won 67 games being led by Lonzo Ball, Jalen Green, and Jabari Smith Jr. In the postseason, James Harden, Paul George, and Jimmy Butler all retired without a ring. The Pelicans get the first overall pick for the second year in a row. The Lakers 2027 pick that they traded away ended up being the seventh pick. And the 2025 pick was the 15th. So in this simulation, it seems worth it to trade it away for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. The draft wasn't that interesting, but free agency definitely was. Lucas signed a four-year $212 million deal to the Clippers. RJ Barrett signed a long-term deal to the Bulls. And Stephen Curry signed a one-year deal to the Spurs, while 90-plus overall Tyrese Maxey signed a four-year deal to the Warriors. Victor is now a 91 overall, but still has zero help. The Nets' big three is still together, but they're all old. It seems like the Wizards finally found their franchise player in 89 overall Arthur Gilbert. His name makes me think he was brutally bullied as a child, but this is just another case of successful bullying. Bronny is now an 86 overall and is no longer Okoro's bitch. Good for him. The Celtics' big three is still together, but they decided to add Kuzma to the mix. The Hawks' big three is still together, and now their starting five is overall 83 through 89. Michael Porter Jr.'s career has come full circle. He was traded back to the Jazz, the team that let him go in the expansion draft to secure Victor. Chet Holmgren is the first MVP besides Luka after averaging 20 points, 13 rebounds, and two blocks. The Celtics added Vukovic to their starting five, but the Pacers are a solid team in 2028. They still have their star one and two, their fourth overall pick from 2023, Baba Miller, and Bobby Portis is wearing Ray-Bans in NBA games. It only took them 24 years to recover from the malice at the Palace, so as long as they don't go Miles Bridges on the first five rows, they should be contending for several more years. They took out the three powerhouse teams in the East, but lost to the OKC Thunder in five. I'm calling white privilege on this one. Josh Giddy was the finals MVP and is a 92 overall at 25.
KD, Curry, and Kawhi retired after this season, and this was the most questionable free agency yet. John Morant signed to the Nets. They still have Kyrie, so their best four players are two point guards and two centers. LaMelo signed to the Cavs, which would be great, except Bronny and Garland are no longer on the team and aren't signed to any team in the league. I just assumed they were selling ass on the corner until they both became all-stars, and it turns out 2K had them both sign a one-year minimum contract to the expansion teams. Michael Porter Jr. might as well be renting apartments at this point. He was traded for a 78 over all Zach Levine and midseason he was traded again to the Pacers for Baba Miller. LaMelo Ball was MVP in his first year for the Cavs and they definitely would have won it all this year if 2K could have figured out how to keep either Bronny or Garland on the team. Anna Wells is the first female coach of the year for the Jazz. 2K always has their priorities straight. The game may not function seven years into the future but at least we have women head coaches. The Celtics finished first in the East and for the first time both expansion teams made the playoffs. The Cavs upset the Bulls just to lose to the Magic but the Bronny led Matadors cruised through the East just to be swept by the seven seed Trailblazers. Bronny got a real contract again to the Hornets and Garland had to take another minimum contract to the Knicks. The Celtics big three broke up in 2029. Jalen Brown left for the Mavs. Garland was the MVP while on a minimum wage contract. The Knicks also had the defensive player of the year and the best teammate of the year in Dick Wright for man. They did all this cheating and gay sex for nothing. They lost to the Magic in the conference finals whose starting five in 2022 to on average can't buy alcohol. And Victor once again proving that tanking is well worth it in the NBA. He averaged 23, 8, and 7 and won his second championship in five years with little to no help. In 2030, Kyrie, Bill, and AD all retired with one ring. The Alligators finally got lucky and got the number one overall pick. They drafted 83 overall Sebastião Viano from Brazil. Big free agency this year, Luca and Evan Mobley teamed up in Milwaukee, but Giannis left to team up with Melo on the Cavs. The Lakers signed Jalen Green and Bam out bio. And after two years of minimum contracts, Darius Garland signed to the Bulls for four years. The Rudy, Ant, and Carl experiment never worked. I really don't think it will in real life, but at least Ant is happy in Vegas. He's signed to the Aces until 2035. Luka won his sixth MVP for the Bucks, and the Gators have another Rookie of the Year in the 6'8 point guard from Brazil. The Lakers messed up the rivalry finals by one game, but it doesn't matter. The Thunder stockpiled picks and tanked for years in preparation for the 2030s. And skipping forward to the next year, they beat the Hawks in five in the finals. And that concludes 10 years of the NBA if some of these teams would stop pussyfooting around. And I totally wish I could make that the title. The Hawks trade was one of the best of them all. The big three is still together 10 years later. They won 50 or more games multiple times. They went to the finals twice. And if I didn't rig it against them, they should have won it in 2026. And they still look like a contending team in 2033. I'd give this trade an A minus. The Celtics big three was an immediate success, but they didn't reach the finals again until 2031. I think Marcus Smart is a bit overrated and is currently what Patrick Beverly was a couple years ago. I wish they could keep Robert Williams in a Bradley Beal trade, but the Wizards clearly are in love with Beal right now. I give this trade result a B. The Wizards never signed anybody good or had a ton of luck in the draft, but that's just 2K being 2K. In today's East, I don't see their current roster doing anything in the playoffs. They're just wasting everybody's time. I give their trades a C plus. Raptors, they got fucked. Kristaps left immediately and they were just a mediocre team until about 2030. But at least they kept Scotty and real realistically more solid players would sign there if they were located in Tampa. They did nothing, but that's currently what I expect of them. They get a C-. The Lakers had a good shot as a one seed, but it didn't work out. I think LeBron would have found a way to win a championship in two years with Buddy Hield and Miles Turner, but it didn't happen in this video. They recovered nicely by picking up Donovan Mitchell in a pick, which is much better than what I expect from them in the future. But at the end of the day, free agents will always want to sign with the LA Lakers, so they get a B+. Clippers, just like the Lakers, free agents will always want to sign there in the modern era. The Dame project didn't exactly work out, but I still feel like it would in real life. Kawhi and Dame are just too cute of a power couple to fail. B- for them. The Nets, they seem like an unfixable mess unless KD and Kyrie go back to their prime in the playoffs. D minus. The Trailblazers are another team that's wasting everybody's time, and to make it worse, they have great young talent and huge trade value in Dame and other players. The trades led to a championship in 2029. I enjoyed dismembering their roster a little bit too much, but they get an A minus. And the Jazz proved that tanking is worth it. In the 22-23 season, I think we're going to see a lot of below average teams sitting out their best players with sore wrists and stomach aches, so they can have the best odds of getting the top pick. Victor is a freak of nature and could be the final breaking point of the small 
small ball era. I'm giving them an A+. That's going to do it for this video. This was a bit different and much longer content than what I usually post, but I enjoyed making it and I hope you enjoyed. I'm still not a fan of this year's 2K. I don't see myself making too many more videos on this game, but that doesn't affect me being a huge NBA fan. So look out for more John Boy style NBA breakdown videos from me on my channel. I've just always wanted to make an expansion team slash mock trade video like this. I just knew it would take me a long time to do it and it sure did. If you're still watching at this point in the video, I owe you a big wet kiss. But on a real note, if there's any Sacramento Kings fans watching this video, let me know in the comments. I don't believe they exist. Love you guys. I will see you in the next one.